I'll try not to keep us long. I don't want y'all to hold no unforgiveness for me. <laughs> because I kept you from the buffet. <laughs> chapter 18, verse 21. When you're there, say amen. amen. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? <laughs> and he thought that was a lot. Think about it. Sometimes we think that's a lot. Well, Lord, I, I gave him seven chances. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, and Jesus said unto him, I say not unto you until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Who may I be that's four hundred ninety? Mm -hmm. Which yeah, actually yeah. means unlimited. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because we limit God's power is our problem. Mm -hmm. We limit the power of the Holy Spirit and His love to give our hearts enough strength to forgive someone else. I'm telling you, when you hold on to that unforgiveness, say you forgave them once, twice. Three times a dozen. <laughs> Who knows? You, 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 you go for that grace three or four times, maybe seven times, and said, I've done it. I'm not doing it no more, Lord. I'm through. They actually control you. They control every part of your life. You say, no, they don't. Yes, they do. They don't even know they do. But they actually control you. They're in your mind day and night. You may have weird dreams at night because they're in your mind. That person, that whatever, that situation stays with you while you sleep. That is why the Word of God says, do not let anger dwell in your heart. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let that happen. Don't let unforgiveness stir inside your mind and sleep on that thing. Develop a hardened heart with it. Walk in forgiveness. When it happens, pile, let it fall off you like a shield upon you. Amen. It's out. I'm not just talking to the hand. I'm not going to even... Let that thing in my heart. I love them anyway. There's nothing they can do about it. Really, through the power of God, if you trust Jesus like we say we trust Him, we can trust Him and work all that out. No matter what the words were said, no matter the actions, because Satan's going to bring somebody you love. We don't tend to hold our forgiveness against people we don't know really that much. We might get offended with them and say, blow them off because we really don't know them that much. Yeah, but they were elected. But yes, those that we know, those that we respect, those that we admire, those that we have a great relationship with, Satan's going to try to use them to cause unforgiveness in your heart, to say a word, to do an action, to cause you such animosity inside your heart that when you hold unforgiveness, and this is like a hand grenade, it's like a hand grenade or a landmine. That is, it's been planted for two Christians. Because the person has offended one of the little ones of Christ. He said it would be better if you have a millstone tied around your neck rather than to offend one of these little ones, which is all of us. So the person that offended the other one is caught in the trap. And the person that's unforgiven is caught in the trap. There's two. It's like a landmine. It's going to take out both of them. Unless you walk in love and don't let that thing stir on you. We must forgive one another. And not just seven times. But we walk, walk in it as Christ has forgiven you of your sins. Let me keep on going. Jesus tells us, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Now this is God Almighty. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents, which is about $80 million in today's currency. <laughs> But for so much as he couldn't pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. Let me stop right there. That tells you that Satan keeps a person in bondage and it affects their whole household. We think, oh no, my little thing is just affecting me and I'll get straight with the Lord. No, you spew it out wherever you go. You affect all those around you. You sure do. I'm telling you, if you get an infection in your body, sooner or later it's going to spread. Mm -hmm. And it's going to affect every part of your body. Mm -hmm. You say, well, no, it's just right here on my arm. I, I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll do something with it. No, but it's going to go up the arm, into the heart, off of the body. 
That's exactly what happens with unforgiveness. When we won't hold, we won't hold on to something, it affects and pollutes our whole household. And we see that right here because this whole household is being commanded now to be sold into slavery. Verse 26, The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with what? Compassion. And loosed him. And forgave him the debt. When you forgive somebody, praise God, you see when Jesus forgives you, God Almighty, you're loosed. You're loosed. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That is forgiveness of sins. You're saved. You feel free. You feel like a hundred pounds has come off of you. Praise God. It's the same way when you forgive someone else. All that weight that's on, inside your heart and upon you comes off. Amen. And you say, wow. But it takes His power to do it. We can't forgive in our own flesh. You, it don't matter how much we love the Lord in our own strength. We're worthless. We cannot do it. Amen. It takes a surrender to be willing to surrender to forgive. Amen. So if, through compassion, God had compassion on this man and forgave him. And that comes through the cross of Christ and what Jesus paid for but the same servant went out. Now this guy is saved now. He's been forgiven of sins. He's been given a new beginning. A brand new life. His sins blotted out. His debt blotted out. He couldn't pay. All of us never could pay our debt to God. We couldn't. It's been blotted out through Jesus' blood and through His sacrifice. That's why He went to the cross. It's been blotted out so we're saved. Woo! Now we see somebody that has ought, that has offended us or that owes us something. Here we are. Now, the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. He owes me an apology. Mm -hmm. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that you owe me. And, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not. But he went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. That's how we do in our own hearts. We've been forgiven. We've been loosed from the bounds of Satan. We've been set free. We're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We've been given co-heirship with God Almighty, with Jesus Christ. And here we are. Well, God has forgiven me, but I will not forgive them. I'm going to make them pay. They're going to owe me. What do you think God thinks about that? Mm. I guess I better read the rest of the prayer. Have we not all done this at one time? Yeah. I'm telling you, this is, a, this is a word we need to get down our hearts and walk in. Verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And came and told unto their Lord all that was done. And this is in prayer. Lord, I pray for such and such. Lord, please reach me. Please don't let them go down this path of unforgiveness or this root of bitterness. There's people praying. These are other Christians praying, interceding. For this man, they said, look, Father, you see what's going on. And so when the Lord seen it, then his Lord, after that, he called him and unto him, Oh, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you desired it of me. Should not you also have compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? And his Lord was wroth, and he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him, which I've already told you. We can't pay. <laughs> and the part I missed, excuse me, was the man didn't owe but a small part. He only owed the man a little bit of money. Probably about 300 bucks in the day's money. And this man owed all. 80-something million he couldn't pay. We owe a debt we couldn't pay yet we've been forgiven. Yet someone does something small to us, a small offense, and we won't forgive them. 